Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Clock Talk with Dr. Greg Brannon. As always, 15 minutes chock full of information. Today, we're going to talk about the different testosterone treatments. And of course, not all of them are the same. Doctor, how are you? Fantastic, Jim. I appreciate that. Yeah, I just have been thinking about this. Yes, we've been talking about testosterone and pellets for from years we've been doing these podcasts and these YouTube shows. There are people out there selling shots as bioidentical or they're selling an oral way is, is the best. I'm not saying they're not good. I'm not saying that. But we're talking about the best. And when they say something is biologically the same, it isn't. The only way it is if it's a molecule is exactly the molecule. Atom for atom, uh, structure for structure, three-dimensional for three-dimensional. And I want to go over today the, the three different categories there are and how they work and how they absorb. Because the molecule itself and the route are the key things to all of this. So just so I understand, we have obviously the pellets, which was, to my mind, the best option. Right. Then you have the shots, which seem to be the most common right now. Yep. Uh, then you have the orals. Yep. And then you have the creams. Yep. So where do you want to start? Let's go. I'm going to go over the actual molecule first. Let me see if this works today. Okay. I'm going to go over the science first of what how this works in our body. FSH. Oh, my gosh. FSH. This is in men, makes sperm. LH makes testosterone. That converts to estradiol and dihydrotestosterone. Those three anabolic steroids mature sperm. Then estrogen is the primary feedback back to the brain, so does testosterone, mainly estrogen, to say we have plenty of this you can turn it off now. So that's the system we have. So what we're gonna do is the categories of the different, mo the different molecules of testosterone. There are four categories. Number one is bioidentical. Number two, three, and four are synthetic. This is the most common, called an ester. It's a molecule that has this long chain of carbons. That's the cyprinate, the ethrate, and the propanate. That is the most common one used across the board that has been used for, since the 1940s. Pellets in the 1930s, I'll go over that a little bit. This one is called 19 nortestosterone. Uh, bound to another esters like that down the way. These are injections. These long esters go in the muscle and sit there and allow it to disperse at a, law, steady, a steadier state. Still not like pellets, but still a steadier state. The half-life in these are around three and a half, four days, so they do that. This one is called 17 alkylation. It is, um, this one you can take orally. There's a couple of them out there. And you can take those orally and they're absorbed either by the gut or absorbed by the lymphatic system in the gut. They absorb at the best three to 5%. I'll go over the, that in a minute. Now, the bioidentical, the one our body makes, the human hormone, lowers blood pressure, does not increase blood clots, and it makes more brain, called neuroplasticity. That's how the body functions normally. All three of these work. They have benefits. They're fantastic benefits. Burn, uh, burn fat, build muscle, cognitive, but there are side effects to all of these. What they do is they increase blood pressure, they increase blood clot risks, and they increase this that affects the liver unless it bypasses, goes to the lymphatic system. But all three of them do something very interesting, Jim. They increase dementia over time. It's a great book out of Belgium on this. What happens is they do what's called apoptosis, neuronal apoptosis. Apoptosis is when a cell dissolves. And those three categories increase that process. So you lose cells, you lose cell growth. Again, the human one grows more cells. The synthetic ones, all three categories at different levels call neuronal apoptosis. Therefore, there's increased dementia, made primarily Alzheimer's. So that's why it's important to understand the molecule structure. And then the other thing is the absorption rate. The pellet which is the human hormone done via bioidentical via pellet, it peaks in 48 hours 
and you lose 0.7% per day. It's a steady state. It sits in fat, not in muscle. So as the blood heart pumps faster, you get a rise when you're working out. That's the closest to mimicking our testicle. All three of the other ones have a half-life. The shots are on three and a half days, or up to 21 days. But that's the problem. And why that's a problem is this. Every cell in the body has a testosterone receptor. Every single one of our cells has a receptor for that. This enzyme called aromatase has different activity on different cells because certain cells need less or more estrogen. This right here is controlled by this. So you have a fluctuation. This may never be at the same homostatic level as this. So therefore you have this up and down, that's the gynomastia, and there's three ways to eliminate it. It goes down the wrong pathway because the side effects of the synthetics is not the testosterone or the testosterone substitute, it's the fluctuation in their metabolites which affect estrogens. So the, only the pellet makes this be homostatic. Not, the cream's the second best, the pellet's the best in that. So therefore the body can be in a steady state. So take the prostate, for example, we talked about that a few weeks ago, and you just mentioned these receptors. Yes. So the receptors, they can only, they accept so much testosterone at the end of the day, they, once they're filled, they're filled. Yes. So if you're on the pellets, for example, and you have a steady state, in this case, the prostate accepts the, the testosterone. And I think there was a study you talked about long ago where if you're, we're at zero, um, nothing would happen. But then when you got to 250, you're still considered low and you have an increased risk of cancer. But then if you're above 250 or maybe it's 500 now, I don't know the exact act, actual numbers, but because those receptors have been saturated, been saturated mm -hmm. then you're, yeah. you have less chance of so getting if, cancer. If you're under 250, yes, it could potentially make it grow. Over 250 does not. And that's, I'm glad you brought that up because the metabolites are important. So the category one we talked about, the ester, the active ingredient is that testosterone, which is bioidentical. It is, but this isn't. So the molecule they're injecting us is not bioidentical completely, but that is active. That's why I like it as my second best. Number two, 19 nor testosterone, that's the active. That's not bioidentical. And again, in the other category, the, um, the, the testosterone that is uh, alkylated called 17 alkylation, that alkylation is not normal. In fact, the first one alkylated was 1947, they made it oral, and they found an increase in liver tumors, liver cancer based upon that, because it, it went to the liver called the first bypass. So therefore, the active ingredient, they'll say on the shots, it's bioidentical, the part that's active it is. I agree, but the ester is not. That's important, but you brought up cancer, I love that. If cancer caused prostate cancer, if testosterone caused prostate cancer, when is a young man's highest testosterone level? Usually 18 year old boy, we use that example. 18 year old boy, an 18 year old boy, his testosterone level is, uh, is a certain level, when it, but it's at highest. When testosterone high in the prostate gland, that enzyme aromatase is inhibited. When that lowers, the, that uh, starts working, then you start making estrogen. The problem is there's two estrogens, an alpha and a beta. This one is prone to proliferation, potentially cancer, because there's an enzyme called BCL-2 that protects cancer cells, that increases it. When you take uh, the beta uh, receptor site, it decreases it. That's why the beta is the one. So we keep, we keep estrogen in men around 30. It's even protective of that. But the interesting thought about that, Jim, is this. It's an eight-year-old boy has high testosterone, supposedly. Therefore, this is not turned on. So the risk factor for prostate cancer is what? Aging. So when you age, what's happening is, I don't care about that. When you're aging, what's happening is you're losing testosterone, which is protective. Yet the treatment in America is no testosterone and make him androgenic. Right. So which gets rid of for two years, but then you look at the studies, there's a higher recurrence rate. Dr. Morgan Teller from Harvard wrote a book called Testosterone for Life. Chapter seven and chapter nine specifically talks about this. And there's a book by Dr. Uh, Friedman talks about uh, the book I gave you on, on cancer and the whole hypothesis behind the, because uh, breast cancer and prostate cancer, that glandular cell work the same in, in the bodies. The BCL-2 is increased by, by E2 alpha, decreased by E2. Um, 
by E2 beta, but testosterone is a suppressor. So getting back to the, the other applications for testosterone treatment, shots, creams in this case, the receptors are being fooled in a way, you know, because in the morning, let's say you take your pill, most of it gets blown out through the gut anyhow, right? Um, but whatever the body's going to get, it's going to be very short and then they're not going to get enough and then they're going to go ahead and react to that mm -hmm. and every single day it's the same process. The, right? the same, the so-called roid rage with the testosterones, it's not the testosterone or even the metabolite of the testosterone. It is the fluctuations of estrogen, even if it's the, the human estrogen, not the metabolite of the, of the, of the organic, the synthetic one. Testosterone is the happy hormone. And the estrogen is the moody hormones. And it's the balance of those, let alone cancer, just the mood. Again, testosterone actually makes the brain grow. This is bioidentical. It's called neuroplasticity. And it makes it talk better, which is called symplasticity. And again, the synthetic categories, the different, the different percentages, they increase neuronal apoptosis. That's the key. Cells dying off earlier. It's like... It has to it has to be the same exact function all the way through because uh, example natural progesterone decreases dementia decreases breast cancer synthetic increases dementia and increases breast cancer just because it sort of fits in the, in the receptor site doesn't make it beneficial and the, also the problem is these metabolites because they work they work three ways. The active metabolite can be the testosterone itself with this, the category one, the cyprinate ones. That's an active metabolite. The other one, nor testosterone, is um, the active metabolite. Some can be converted to 5-alpha reductase to more energetic receptors, uh, active metabolites. And then they can also be converted to estrogens. It's the estrogens that are the problem. That's why we recommend giving DIM, which actually um, makes estrogen go out the two pathway, which is protective, not the 16 or 4 pathway. So- you have the bioidentical pellet that's been around since the 30s. Yep. Why can't they manufacture the shot, let's say, the same way that they manufacture the pellet, but in liquid form? Beautiful. Because you got to bypass the, the beautiful defense system of our body, the liver, the skin. These things are important. Don't forget our testicle or ovary in women are in our bodies and they're, they're, they're covered in fat to protect them. So when they, an endocrine gland does not connect from me to you, it goes into the room. Like I, I, I'm the endocrine gland. I make this and then I let it in the room and you grab it and not, it's not a connection. So the, the pellet mimics that it releases it into the capillaries is in the bloodstream and the cells that need to grab it. If you take it orally, what happens is, is even category six, I, I category three there, that long uh, carbon chain allows it to bypass the liver the first time, but still only 3% is absorbed by the lymphatic system. The older one, the 17 uh, alpha methylated at the alpha receptor site, it absorbed by the, it absorbed by the gut, but it went direct to the liver, increased blood clots and liver tumors. So therefore, because they're not known structures to our body, that's important. If your body recognizes something that is foreign, it has a defense system to clear it out. That's the problem. And the metabolite takes a go. So if we can invent it, or there is a good, there's a good oral one out there right now. I'll say good in the sense that it has a 21-day half-life, has increased blood pressure, increased blood clots, but it's, it's oral. It's once a day, but you peak at around 7, 800. And again, you take it such a high volume because you can't keep it up. You can't keep it steady state. And again, the structure is going with undecanate is not bioidentical. I mean, obviously, from a branding perspective, People think it's a lot easier taking an oral every single day. I would argue that it's not. I would argue that every single day you got to take that. Yep. And if you forget, you know, things are going to, you know, could go south. And not in a, a bad way. catastrophic way, but coming in for a 10-minute placement that's totally non-invasive. And you don't have to worry about it for the next times four a year. five months. I, I agree. Mean, I know. It's a no-brainer as far and as And that's the thing about it is there's a great book out of Germany called Testosterone. To sell pellets, it's actually I mean, that's sell to sell shots. The the one they're selling is undecanate, the big one. In their treatment section, it says there's nothing better than pellets pharmacologically, mimicking nothing. But there's a twelve point seven percent chance of losing a pellet. Okay, that's their risk. That's why, but everything else is better. Our rate's less than one percent. So therefore, can you get the fine? If the technique, would I want to stick myself if I had an easier way to do it? No, it does not 
mimic the testicle. And therefore the side effects are, there's no gynomastia, there's no roid rage, there's no blood pressure change, there's none because naturally testosterone secreted the proper way, lowers blood pressure, lowers blood clots, and makes more brain. I can't stress the brain part. Well, this is a burgeoning industry that's going to continue to get bigger and there's going to be a lot of competition out there. But thank you for clarifying today that pellets is the way to go. Science is the answer here, bud. <laughs> <laughs>